ladies good morning it is set, uh, Sunday morning I'm not sure of the date but I just got out the shower uh, yeah I do have my bra on it's like a swimsuit ladies don't trip so yeah I'm just trying to uh, get ready I'm rushing out of here for church um I did go ahead and put on my earrings and my jewelry, and um, we're going to get out of here. This is what I used in my hair. You can't really see what it is. Ooh, my $50. I just found this $50 in the drawer, but I ain't find it because it wasn't lost. I just forgot to put it in there. But this right here, my friend gave me this. It's Gorilla Snot. Girl, works perfectly. That's what I have in my hair now. So that... Girl, we can't look. We can't be musty with the Lord. I need to shave too. But first of all, don't worry about that. And this is Dove. Ladies, this cream, what I just do with the cream? Oh, if y'all have not, go check out my videos. Go dig in a crate. You know, Target, Walmart, um, Macy's. A lot of these stores, these big brand stores, they donate um, to the Goodwill once they're overstocked or what have you. And what happened was this cream and this deodorant was an overstock from uh, Target and they donated it to the Goodwill. Now this is originally $10, ladies. Do you see that $10? This is originally $10. I got it for $1.99 at the Goodwill and y'all know I brought a whole bunch. And this Dove was $2 at the Goodwill. Y'all know I got a bunch of these. So, yeah, if y'all haven't checked that video out, go check that video out. Ladies, I tell y'all, I come across stuff all the time. I don't know how, I don't know why, it just happens. But listen, I wanted to tell you all, oh, let me put some stuff on my feet. <laughs> Girl, back. Um, I wanted to tell you, ladies, thank you for the auction yesterday. Um, I did have some mishaps, some things happen, my laptop broke. Um, just a just a array of things happen, and I will put some clips in. Oh, you hold it because we gotta put some in there because that thing is not stable. And if my laptop fall, I'm be mad. What is going on here? Seven, six, five, four, two, three, two, one. We don't know ones here right now. That part. Congratulations, Alanda. Thank you, baby. Okay. So now, let me just say, um, I did not set up my PayPal. Um, I do have Cash App. My daughter is trying to get that now, that information now. Um, now, what's this? I'm trying to pull it up. I don't know where it's going. You trying to pull what up? You Cash App. Oh, can I connect the Apple Store? Oh, yeah. Two seconds. Uh, okay, baby. Well, I'm gonna need you to get the marker. Uh, Excuse me. Cash up. Okay, there go cash up, Missy Courtney. Okay. Okay, Amanda. Look, I'm gonna put. Oh, oh, God damn it! The fuck. Hey guys. Mother is having a moment right now. Um, I was going live at ten o'clock. Somehow, my laptop fall over. I don't know if my daughter bumped the thing. I don't know if it just, for whatever reason, <laughs> today it decided to fall. Broke my laptop, spilled coffee on the table, and now the circling thing is, is my internet is not connecting, which has been connecting all along, but now it's not connecting. So, um, I just felt some type of way, and I just turned off the live. But give me a minute. I'ma still do it. I appreciate everyone who came out. And if y'all could jump back on, 
I'm going to start it at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, the devil is mad. I don't know what God's going to do. Um, because when I tell you everything that could go wrong, it was going wrong. But that's all right because I'm bigger than this. Yeah, my feelings is hurt because my little laptop is broke, but it be okay. It be okay. I ain't been to the Goodwill, so guess what, y'all? I got the money to go buy another laptop right now if I want to. Ain't God good? So, ladies, like I said, jump back on at 12 o'clock. I will be live. I don't, look, mother gonna make some shake. I don't know how it's gonna shake, but we gonna shake shimmy something. So, I see y'all at 12. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much. All right, bye. Um... But I just want to say thank you for coming out, for coming to support. Um, it was ladies in the comments. Now, I'm not telling y'all what I'm saying. I'm telling y'all what they said. Yes, who was they? Y'all have to look in the comments and see. I don't know if the comments is rolling in there from the people who commented. I don't know. I don't know how live works, ladies, because <laughs> this was my first time doing a live. But, um, yeah, they were saying, honey, people is sleeping on me. Yes, y'all is sleep. Girl, when I tell you this girl got a $200 tote for, how much she get that tote for? I want to say $10. I would have to go back and look at the video. Um, this other girl got some um, stilettos, girl, shoe booties, pony hair, genuine leather. She got them for $10. I told y'all, come on over to my auctions, honey. I'm not trying to beat nobody in the head. I'm, I'm not trying to take advantage. Y'all don't pay attention to my nails. My nails need to be done both. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to, I need to clear out. I need to declutter. I definitely have an overstock going on here. So, um, yeah, uh, y'all didn't, look, but we have an auction Saturday. So make sure y'all here Saturday. I'm going to put the date in. Um, but yeah, for right now, I got to get ready to go to church. But I wanted to come on and say thank you. I did have a video that I had already recorded for today. But um, I really wanted to come and say thank you. Because by it being my first auction, um, so many things went wrong. I was ready to quit. Um, not quit YouTube, but I just was ready to quit the auction. And I'm like, I'm promoting it. I think my last video, I put the little clip in like three times in the video. I'm like, I gotta do it. But I just didn't have the energy, the mental capacity to do it. I really didn't. And, um, I talked to my girl, Chris. And, um, <laughs> she said, you gotta, you, you gotta say something. Cause I look. My laptop fell. If y'all watched that video, you could see. I'm like, oh, da -da 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 -da. I'm getting ready to go to church. I'm not going to use all them words because, baby, I was using them words, honey, like they was in my Rolodex yesterday. <laughs> that part. So I did go back on. I did a little a little um, update. I think it's like a minute and 40-something second. So y'all go look at that. Give it a thumbs up. Um, not Alive was like two hours or something long. Go in there and watch it, see how things went. Um, see some of the items I had. I had some things that didn't sell. I had a whole bunch of stuff I did not show. But we're going to do another auction Saturday. All of the items, because uh, Monday is Labor Day. So all of the items are going to be shipped out Tuesday. So it's whatever you purchase plus $10. So one girl on there, she brought one, two, I can't even count. But she brought one, two, three, four. She brought maybe four or five items. She brought an incline bag with the matching incline shoes. She brought a, um, a reversible tote. So it's like a um, like a cream and then like a mint color. So it's a reversible tote. So she got two in one. When I tell you, baby girl was cleaning up, she was. She got that uh, Kate Spade, the big body one. She got that one. I think she got that one for like $30. So yeah, ladies, y'all, girl, come on. Look, we got to go get ready for church. Now, I can't tell the Lord I was late because I was messing around with y'all. All right, so we're going to get ourselves together. Um, I did already pick out what I was wearing. So this is what I'm wearing. And I'll be back once I put it all together. <laughs> Bring it back.
I can rewind it. But all that glitters. Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna tell y'all. I just grabbed my keys to go to church and my car is not here. I mean, I know my daughter, maybe she ran to the store, let me call her. Oh, let me call her, give me a hand. But look, mother done whip, whip, whip. I done just threw on this t-shirt, it's a little extra snug. Cause mother is finna walk to church. My church is not that far from me. So I'm finna walk to church. I threw on some black slides and we finna make some stuff shake. Boy, I tell you, the devil is so mad. I never, I literally never have my car when my daughter's here. And I was so tired yesterday. Let me drink some coffee. I was so tired yesterday that you know, the kid daddy's, uh, the kid's daddy came and got them. And I went on to sleep. I went to, oh, I didn't grab no sunglasses. I don't feel like going back in there. So, uh, girl, I'm about to cut right through this grass. This is my little shortcut for the day. <laughs> so, yeah. My daughter got my car. I got dressed totally oblivious to the fact that I did not have a car. So, I'm gonna walk to church. I walked to get high. I walked to meet dude at the corner. I walked to hang out. I walked to the bar. I could walk to church. So look, this is my cute strut. I don't want y'all to see me breathing all hard. I pick y'all up when we get there. <laughs> Bye. All right, y'all. So uh, I called my daughter. I didn't even call her when I realized my car wasn't there because I just didn't. Look, I can't tell y'all the whole story. I'm walking. But um, I just talked to her. And she said she was on her way to the house. So I told her. She said, you walking a dog with a purse? <laughs> Girl. So, um, I'm like, no, ma'am. I'm walking to church. So, I look, I'm going to get there in time for the word. I think I'm going to miss the singing. The praise and worship. But I told her I'm walking to church. <laughs> ma'am, I do not want to walk back. That part. Please be here to get me when I get out. With struggle comes ease. Look, I told y'all before I had a get a ride skirt. So I told my daughter, I said, I'm walking. I said, I don't have my get a ride skirt on. But I got my praise the Lord pants on. So, it is what it is. Oh my Jesus. Yeah, Lord, I need your help. I, I need you to pull me right now. Oh my God, the sun is beaming on my back. Y'all see my face? I'm sure y'all see my face all sweaty. Um, but yeah, lady, the auction yesterday, that's where I got into the swing of it. It was a good time. We had a good time. I did end up going back to Walmart because that's where I got my laptop from, Gateway. And when I brought it, I brought it and then I returned it because I wanted a bigger screen. So when a lady returned it to me, she gave me credit, even though I paid with my debit card. Lord, we're gonna take a break. So, and with Walmart, each item gets one number. So whatever that number is, um, if you return it, that item is going to be as returned. So even with a receipt, even though I don't have my receipt, I have my bank statement. But even with a receipt, that laptop, where that dog at? That laptop 
is in the system as being returned. So she told me to call corporate. She said once the lady returns the um the laptop, even though I won, because when I went back up there and I'm gonna tell y'all what God love. The next size with the same with the same storage was like almost two hundred dollars more. So I said, no, I'll just keep mine. So I had already set it up and everything. So I told the lady, I said, well, whatever, da 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 the price. I'll just take the one I just returned back. And so she did that. But now, in the system, it's saying that my laptop, even though it's in my possession, it's saying that it's returned to Walmart. And it was returned to Walmart the day after I brought it. So... Um, the manager tells me to call Walmart, real nice lady. Hey, Miss Pamela. Um, so she, girl, I drive this all the time. I didn't know it was going uphill. Okay, we're gonna keep pushing forward. So, um, she, she gave me the number for corporate, 1-800 Walmart. <laughs> she didn't really have to give it to me. But anyway, so I call them and I'm telling her what the problem is. And I tell her that Miss Pamela said, per Walmart policy, she was not supposed to sell me that same uh, laptop that I just returned. I'm talking about in a matter of 10, 15 minutes. So, um, girl, I'm walking this way. So anyway, the lady said that they can't get into Walmart system so she's gonna put a rush on it. And um, she told me, don't worry about it. They're gonna exchange the laptop. So I'm thankful for that. Cause I just brought it in February. Y'all haven't seen that video. Go dig in the crates, come on girl. Yes, it's these cars coming. And for the life of me, I don't know why Georgia, girl dig on my baby. Girl, she's saving the day. So, long story short, short story long, I'm gonna get another laptop. I just gotta wait a minute, okay? So, I got like another block to go, but I am so thankful she here. Look, look at my car. I don't even see my car when she here. <sighs> Stop! I told y'all that he got me. Woo. He may not come when you want him, but he right on time. Hey, Jojo. Hey, Delilah. Woo. Jesus said be on time next time. Woo. Say good morning. good morning. Don't be covering your face. Okay. I made it. I was walking. My daughter had my car. I meditate on you in the night watch. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, baby, good morning. I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Psalm, the 63rd Division. Perhaps in the margin of your Bibles, it says something to the effect that this was a Psalm of David. And it was written while David was in the wilderness. He wasn't in the palace. He was in the wilderness. He wasn't out there tending sheep like he had been for his daddy when he was a boy. He was out in the wilderness 
running for his life. And it was there that he penned the song. Yes, this was a song. Perhaps David played the harp while he sang this one. But it came from his heart and it testified about what David thought about God. When nobody else was around, he gives some glimpse about his heart toward God, about his realization about who he was. Those two things equaled his relationship. He begins by saying, oh God, you are my God. You're my God. In another place he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. See, it's a relationship. You are my God. You're not their God. You're not her God. You're my God. I take possession of you even as you have taken possession of me. You're my God. Not Molech, not some other god, not the god of the Egyptians. You are my god, Jehovah. And he says early, or in another translation, it renders it earnestly. Earnestly or early will I seek after you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. I don't know if that gets into your crawl like it does me. But he says, I prioritize God. I do early what is more important for me. I don't wait till later in the day. I got to get this in now. I prioritize God above everything and every, I don't want anything to get in my way of my relationship with my father. So I earnestly and early seek you. He says, my soul. You know what the soul is? The soul is the real you. You know what we see on the outside, what we see all dressed up in our clothes and watches and hair and all, that's not really you. That's the pretense of you. The real you is your soul. That's where your mind is. That's where your heart is. That's where your desires are. That's where your habits are. That's where you are. And he says, my soul, the real me, belongs to you. I was made for relationship with you, God. Let me tell you this. Let me remind some of you and inform some of you otherwise that you were made to worship God. You were made, listen, listen, listen. You were made on purpose to worship and praise God. Now listen, that doesn't mean just in this kind of an assembly that you worship God. But listen, whatever way God made you, if you're good with numbers, you worship God by using them numbers. If you're good with speaking, you better be speaking. If you're good with teaching, you better be praising God by teaching whatever you have. It is with that that your soul blesses God. I often say the every they're going to get what's coming to them. I mentioned to my son yesterday, we had a beautiful conversation where he talked about how he has found the Lord again. Y'all ain't hearing me. How he has found the Lord again. He was lost, but now he's found. He had to go a little bit of the way of hell in order to get there. But it's okay to go to hell if it brings you back to God. I told you there's suffering. There's sorrow involved in this walk with God. It's not an easy walk. But it is the walk 
that God gives us, along with all the other things that he blesses us with. And that means that even those sorrowful moments are blessings. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. We think about that kind of song for kids. But we're all his kids. You're a child of God. You didn't create yourself. And let me say this while I'm here. The universe didn't create you either. Since I'm passing over this, the universe was created by God. It don't create nothing. There's only one procreator. And that's God. That's God. Those who seek my life to destroy it, David was hunted like an animal. But he was fearless. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. David says the king shall rejoice in God. The king shall rejoice in God. You know who he's speaking of? Himself. He believed what God said he was. He was a mere child. When God ordained him, anointed him, declared him to be king of the Jews. But he wasn't in position yet. He wasn't in the place of Saul. And by the way, he had times when he could have kill Saul. But he chose not to kill him because he knew God would. There's something about waiting on God. Let God do what God's going to do instead of you trying to step in and help God out. Let God be God. He said, I won't take his life. I'll let God handle it. You got some enemies, don't you? Come on, somebody. You got some enemies, don't you? Let God handle them. Don't you try to help, help God handle them. God says, I'll take care of them. David accepted that he was king, so he calls himself the king. He believes what God has declared about him. The question is, do you? Do you accept what God has made you to be? Do you accept that you are a son of God, a daughter of the king? Do you believe that you are favored and loved? That his loving kindness is for you? That God ain't trying to get you. He's not trying to punish you. God is loving and kind toward you. You are the head and not the tail. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you are joint heirs with Christ? Do you believe that you have been crucified with Christ? Do you believe that his love will never fail for you? Do you believe that no matter how far or how dark you have been, that you can still come back to his loving arms? Amen. Do you believe that you are the righteousness of God? 
Now I see some of you affirming, I believe that. But I think that many of us think like this. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Dr. Adrian Rogers said this. He said, the me I see is the me I'll be. The me I see is the me I'll be. And if I see myself as a sinner, saved by grace, then the preponderance of my mindset is on sinning. Because that's what I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I know it sounds good because it's humbling. I'm humbling myself before the Lord. But it then denounces what God has said about you. He doesn't say ever, ever, that you're a sinner saved by grace. You show me that in the scripture. It's not in there. You know why? Because you're not a sinner saved by grace. You are the righteousness of God. You are holy. You're a royal nation. You're a people who belong to God. You're not a sinner. You're chosen people. <laughs> Thank you. Help me preach this one, okay? Amen. That's who you are. But when we accept the idea, I'm just a sinner. I'm just trying to make it. See, if you knew how much I sin, see, you think too much about sin. You're going backwards from where you've been brought from. You've been brought out of darkness. Hold on, y'all. You've been brought out of darkness. Where have you been placed into the marvelous light? That's where you are. You're not in darkness. Stop thinking I'm dark. Stop thinking I'm a sinner. Stop thinking I can't help myself. Amen. Then you're spending all your time in the wrong arena. Amen. Amen. So who do you think you are? Does that make sense? Who you think you are shapes what you do. Amen. I'm not a sinner. I'm a saint. Oh, no, I know that's too heavy for some of y'all. Well, uh, uh, I don't believe I'm no saint. <laughs> you're looking at the, see, you're looking not by faith. You're looking by sight. Well, I look like a sinner. And I feel like a sinner. Therefore, I'm a sinner. But you're not listening to the Word of God. The Word of God doesn't continue to tell you after you've been born again that you are a sinner. Yes. Amen. He tells you you are a saint. Yes. You're righteous. Yes. You're holy. Yes. You're pure. Yes. That's who you are. Touch your neighbor and say, that's who I am. Now you got to say it like you believe it now. You got to accept that. That's, that's a big deal. Amen. Confess what God has said about The me I see is the me I'll be. Say that with me. The me I see is the me I'll be. One more time. The me I see is the me I'll be. So who do you see yourself as? See yourself as God sees you. See yourself as as God, see, you the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. You've been bought with a price. Amen. You're not that old refuse who used to be like a stinking, you don't know what that says over in Isaiah. You're nothing but a like, filthy rag. That's a, a minstrel cloth. You're not that anymore. He said, we've been washed. You 
you better start believing what God has said about you. Don't adapt to your old way. Adapt to the new way. Amen. The new image. Amen. The new life that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So what do we learn from this? What do we do now? I'm going to suggest some things to you that I think will help you. You might want to write them down. Number one, you want to rise early. Rise early so you can get your prayer on. Get your prayer on first thing in the morning. Get your Bible out first thing in the morning. I have made that a practice over the years, and it has blessed my life. The first thing I do before my feet hit the floor is I say, thank you, Lord. If I'm breathing, I say, oh, God, thank you for the breath. I realize my heart is beating. Thank you. My blood is still coursing through my veins. I open my eyes. I say, oh, God, I can still see. Thank you. Ooh, I just heard a bird. Thank you for hearing. Thank God for what you got. I got a bed. Man, I'm in the bed. Oh, that's nice. Even though it may not be the nicest one out there. It may not be, you know, that Serta or whatever the sleeper you like. But it's a bed. You know what? David wasn't complaining. He was sleeping under the stars or in caves when he penned the song. So rise up early, pray, praise, and get your read on. Read the word of God. Prioritize God, secondly. Look for God in the sanctuary of your life. Look for him. You know, one of the things that I did while we were in, and I think it's when you go different places where you haven't been, you can more readily see the awesomeness of God. We stood on the beach and looked out at that great body of water, the Pacific Ocean. I could only give God praise. I looked at those clouds. Didn't rain on us at all. The weather was just perfect. I couldn't help but to thank God for the splendor. I said, man, heaven can't be too much better than this. But he promises that it is. <laughs> Look for the Lord in the sanctuary around you and within you. Remember, the sanctuary is on your two feet, not in this room. You harbor the spirit of the living God. He lives within you. So look within at your sanctuary and see God's glory. Third, accept God. Accept God. Really accept him as your Savior and your Lord. Savior meaning I have a way back to God the Father. One of the things my son said to me in our conversation yesterday, he said, Daddy, you know, there's so many voices in social media that will tell you that our religion is a white man's religion. And that we shouldn't be following the white man's religion when we have been, there are, they have been our oppressors. And I said, Isaac, they have, many have used the scriptures against us. No doubt about it. That's not made up facts. That's the truth. They said stuff like, we are supposed to be cursed because of the curse of Ham. And they would say things like, slaves, obey your masters. The Bible is saying slavery is a good thing. They took it all out of context. But then I reminded him, you know Abraham, you know Isaac, and you know Jacob. Do you know they were Africans? This ain't no white man's religion. And by the way, it ain't about white, black, green, blue, yellow, purple. It ain't about skin tone. It's about the soul of human beings. It's not even about that. Let's not politicize Jesus Christ. And then there was another clip that said, well, why would we need to worship Jesus? Why would we need to pray to Jesus when well, we can just go straight to God? The problem with that is this. Jesus said, when well, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. 
And he was talking to one of those who had been with him for three years. He said, you still don't understand who I am? When you've seen me, Thomas, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. And he said, furthermore, he, listen to this. He said, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father, and you are in me. And because we are in him, we are also in God. Therefore, there is nothing between us and God. But the problem is, is Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. Listen, and no man comes to the Father except by me. So there's no other path. There's no other way. There's no other hope. It is Christ or bust. It is Christ or nothing. So what I'm saying to you, beloved, is accept Christ so that you can have God. Without Christ, there is no God. Don't forget his loving kindness is toward you. Here's the fourth thing. Repeat to yourself what God has said about you. Confess what he has said about you. He has said many things about you. I am the righteousness of God. I am chosen. I am dearly loved. I am holy. I am a saint. You see, when you accept those attributes, those things, those statements, it changes what you do. We don't have a problem with sin. Your sin has been forgiven. You've been forgiven. You've been set free. We say about freedom. Freedom, freedom. That freedom is freedom to love God without worrying about messing up on God. You never earn salvation by what you did. Well, I was baptized. That didn't get to me. That didn't make you saved. Well, I go to church. That don't make you saved. Well, I tithe, and I'm a big tither. That don't make you saved. You're saved not by anything that you do. His loving kindness. His loving kindness is unbelievable. You don't deserve what he gave you, what he's given you. You don't deserve it. But he loves you like he does. And he wants you to have the best. One, one other thing that I recently came to understand while we were on our trip. I need to get away more. Y'all need to send me some more places. <laughs> one of the things I learned, really thinking about it, why does God say certain things are sins? I used to think it was God was controlling. He just wants you to do what he said. You know, like when I was a father, when I had young kids, you know, my kids say now, say, Daddy, you ain't the same father you used to be. You let the grandkids get by with everything. Well, see, I done learned some things. I know now better than I did before. You ain't got to be an autocrat. It's my way or the highway. I, you do it because I said do it. That's the kind of father I was. But that ain't the kind of father we got. You know, even when he says, don't do that. Don't go in that direction. Do you, do you know why? He's not just our father. He's our designer. He's our manufacturer. He's the one that created you. As the creator, he knows how you operate best. Mm -hmm. 
in my truck, I had a problem. I stopped at a QT. Nick Jackson had told me several years ago, pastor, don't get gas at QT. Now, I'm about to mess up some of y'all's theology when it comes to gas. Because I know y'all some QTers in here. But he told me, he said, Pastor, don't go to QT to get gas because it's cheap gas. I, one day I had, I was about out of gas. I went to the QT because it was available and I filled up my tank. And I drove off and things were great. And then after a while, next time I stopped, the truck wouldn't start. I said, what's going on? I mean, it wouldn't even crank. I knew I had just gotten a new battery, so I said, it can't be the battery. Came back after an appointment and cranked right up. And then it started chug a lugging. Like, you know, this is a nice truck I got. And it, it never has acted like that before. Well, you know what I found out? Carolyn told me, she's the nurse in the family. She diagnosed the problem. She said, why don't you put in there some really good gas? So I went to BP. Now, I'm not proclaiming BP is all that, but I went to BP and put in that high test. You know, the most expensive gas. I filled up the rest of my tank with that most expensive gas that gives you, I don't know, is that 93 octane, something like that. It's way above what I really need. But do you know what it did? It made my truck run right. God knows the way we are to run. <laughs> he knows what we need to operate the way he designed us to. Remember this. You were designed to worship God. Praise is supposed to be a part of your existence. So worship Him and praise Him with the gift of life that you have within you. Don't wait till you are dead and on your deathbed and say, I'm going to come now. You know what, Randall? We're going to sing this song. Y'all are going to sing this song. And the words of that song Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. And this song really is, is meant to provoke your heart. It's something about music that the spoken word can't reach. But that music can reach into the inner recesses of your heart and produce something. I pray that you'll listen to the words of this song. Because what it testifies to it's how overwhelming God's love is. Who do you think you are? I pray that you think you are God's child. I pray that you think you are the head and not the tail. I pray that you think you are holy and righteous and true and pure. I pray that that's what you adapt in your mind about yourself. And then secondly, I pray that you'll have this idea about God. That God loves me with a loving kindness that's unbelievable. His love will never fail. It will never cease. He'll never leave me out to dry. He'll always be with me. And even now, when I don't do what he wants me to do, he still stays in my life. He's there waiting for me to come back home. Let's sing, y'all.
The only satisfaction is found in Jesus Christ. Why don't you come? You're not coming to me. You're not coming to this church. You're coming to him. Who is here today? 
I see her tears. And I feel her emotions. And I thank you for her connection with you right now, God. I thank you for Sister Liz, and I thank you. I thank you for every person who has come. I thank you, God, for what they have received from your mouth today, from your heart today. And I pray, God, that they are stimulated so much that they are connected again or in a more dramatic way with you today than they were before. Lord, heal. Heal the sin sickness. Thank you for saving for healing, for delivering. Thank you for rescue. And thank you for your loving kindness. In Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anybody who wants to join our ministry, join our church, anybody who wants closer relationship with God by way of this ministry, we're here for the purpose of helping you to walk by faith, to get to be where God wants you to go and where he wants you to be. He's designed a life for you. He has orchestrated you for a purpose. He wants you to have it. That's the reason why you're still here today. You ever ask yourself, why am I still alive? Why am I still alive? Why me, God? Why me? Because God says I'm not through with you yet. You still got a purpose to fulfill. Yet. Let him have your heart. Because you've got his. I said you've got his. He loves you more than words can express. Amen. You may be seated. Just for me, just for me, just for me. 
We want to strive to be like the Lord. We want to, we don't want to say we're Christians, Father, but our actions, Lord, should prove it as well. And our hearts, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, ladies, I am going to wrap this video up. Um, uh, look, you have seen all you had to see. When I tell you that word, I got one today. When I tell you getting up, getting dressed, making the effort, all of that, and realize my car wasn't here. And guess what? Mama always said, one monkey don't stop no show. Her mother got on a good foot. Yeah, I put my shoes on and got on a good foot. That part. I probably shouldn't have been wearing, trying to wear no heels anyway. But anyway, listen, ladies. I like to say thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the content. Look, if you didn't get a word out of that, I did. When I tell you yesterday was so hectic in the beginning, me doing that auction, girl, when I tell you God laid and slayed the whole thing. Girl, look, my daughter showed me my cash app. I'm like, that's my cash app. <laughs> that part. So, ladies, again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that post notification bell, ladies. So you know when I post. I post on Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. And until next time, ladies, I love you all. Bye. And we're done.